We now have to move to members' statement. That's all the time we have for the debate. So I recognize the member for Thornhill. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. On April 2nd, we celebrate Education and Sharing Day to honor the work and teachings of Rabbi Menachem Mendel, Mendel Schneerson. Established in 1978, it pays tribute to his endless commitment for better education for the children of North America. The seventh leader in the Chabad Lubavitch dynasty, Rabbi Schneerson was born in Ukraine in 1902 and moved to New York to escape the Holocaust. If the Holocaust showed the world the evil of which human beings are capable, the rabbi reminded us of what good people we can be. He was devoted to teaching the infinite value of every human life and the practice of loving your neighbor. The rabbi inspired millions, not only with his wise words, but with his actions. He created a global network of Chabad emissaries in over 100 countries, offering social service programs and humanitarian aid all around the world. A tireless advocate for youth, he promoted education as a cornerstone of humanity, and in an era where a woman's education was not valued the same as a man's, the rabbi staunchly created more educational opportunity for girls. He was even known to write, there must be a girl, on educational materials that only depicted boys. April 2nd will mark the rabbi's 121st birthday. In Hebrew, we say, Admea ve'esrim which means until 120. The rabbi may have not have reached uh, 120, but his legacy certainly lives on. Thank you. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Hamilton West and Castro Thank you. Speaker, uh, tragically, we have lost this amazing a young woman in our community, Melinda Moot. Friends and family described her as the best humanity has to offer. Melinda suffered from a rare disorder, which was in remission, but symptoms recurred and she went to emergency and medical distress. There are only three triage nurses working and 34 people waiting in front of her. Despite her life-threatening conditions, she waited for hours. Finally, a nurse found her vomiting blood in a garbage can and barely conscious. Everything that could go wrong did. The long wait, important blood tests and plasma treatments missed. Family is left wondering if this could have saved her life. Melinda used her last days to write about our health care crisis from her hospital bed. True to her kind nature, she began by thanking the overwhelmed nurses and strangers who came to her aid. But she warned, our health care is a broken system. Melinda said, I'm hoping to add my voice so people know how bad it is. People aren't dying from mysterious illnesses. It's from lack of accessible, preventable care. She herself died a few days later. This government's cuts are literally letting people die needlessly. Good people, our loved ones. So for anyone hearing our pleas or the pleas of Melinda's family, if you or a loved one has struggled with the health care system, joining us in demanding urgent action, it's going to take all of us to speak up, just like Melinda did in her dying days. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Scarborough, Rouge Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Working closely with the University of Toronto Scarborough Campus Administration, we are establishing Scarborough Academy of Medicine and Integrated Health, the first ever medical school in Scarborough. Remarkably, the last time a medical, was, medical school was built in Toronto was in 1843, almost two centuries ago. The Scarborough Medical School represents more than the symbol of progress. It represents, it's a, it's a beacon of hope for our long neglected community. Mr. Speaker, by training healthcare professionals who understand the unique needs of Scarborough, we can deliver a top quality comprehensive plan comprehensive care. And Mr. Speaker, our government's plan, the recent budget plan, allocated an additional $100 million to expand and accelerate medical education across Ontario, across Ontario, and in, moreover, they have invested $33 million to create 100 postgraduate uh, po post seats and 154 uh, undergraduate seats in, in the next three years. This initiative is a core component of our government's plan to solidify and strengthen health care in Scarborough for generations to come. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Member Statements, the member for Toronto Centre. Thank you, Speaker, and good morning. March 31st marks the International Transgender Day of Visibility. This is a day to celebrate the achievements of transgender people and raise awareness of discrimination faced by transgender people worldwide. This day encourages us to recognize that trans and non-binary individuals continue to resist oppression by simply being who we are. Challenges, however, do exist. This is exactly why we are seeing a rampant rise of bigotry and violence against trans, non-binary, and queer communities. Driven by irrational fear and destructive political gamesmanship, there are 40, 4, 300 and 431 pieces of legislation pending across America that tr target transgender people. Those numbers are hard to get out, Speaker. A week ago, the Ugandan parliament passed anti-homosexual legislation that imprisons people for just identifying as 2SLGBTQ+. Some offences carry the death penalty. Such a hateful and violent law must be condemned by every parliamentarian in this House. Absolutely. Here in Ontario, we have the opportunity to be a world leader speaker on transhuman rights. Starting with improving access to health care this year with my private member's bill, the Gender Affirming Health Care Advisory Act. And don't forget, Speaker, this government could show its commitment to trans health care today by committing to restart the Connect Clinic without an alternative funding plan so that everyone in Ontario, no matter how remote access they are, they have access to gender affirming care. To all my trans and non binary community members in Ontario, the Ontario NDP sees you, supports you, values you today and every other day. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Sarnia Lambton. Thank you, Speaker. It's an honour to rise today to share with the Ontario Legislature important news from Sarnia Lambton. I'm extremely pleased to inform the members of this Legislature that recently Ontario's Minister of Health appointed Dr. Carolyn Dueck as the new Permanent Medical Officer of Health for the County of Lambton. Dr. Duick previously served as the Acting Associate Medical Officer of Health for the Middlesex London Health Unit. She has also worked in public health roles in Peel, York Region, and as a family physician in both Guelph and Bramalea. Dr. Duick's appointment is key to helping the hardworking team at Lambton Public Health advance important public health programs and services that support the positive health and well-being of our community. I'm extremely pleased to welcome Dr. Duick into her new role. I look forward to working together with Dr. Duick and the Lambton Public Health team in the coming weeks and months. Congratulations, Dr. Duick. Best wishes for a great future in your new role, and thank you, Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Temiskaming Cochrane. Speaker, I would like to take the opportunity to make the House aware of a very sad day in Temiskaming Cochrane. Today at the Lloyd Hembroof Civic Centre, people are about to pay their respects for the passing of Victor Lee. Victor was born in Timmins on August 24, 1994. He studied pharmacy at the University of Waterloo gaining his Doctor of Pharmacy in 2018. He worked at the Guardian Pharmacy in Iroquois Falls. And in Northern Ontario, where we're so short of primary health care, pharmacists are lifelines. And he was a true lifeline. On Wednesday, March 22nd, while going home from work, at 28 years old, Victor lost his life on the Trans-Canada Highway. The accident is still under investigation, but we need to remember that the Trans-Canada Highway for Victor, for us, is our main street. We need to remember that. I believe I'd like to take the opportunity on behalf of everyone here in the House to pay our respects to Victor's family, friends, his loved ones. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Brantford Brant. Thank you, Speaker. I never tire of saying that Brantford Brant is home to world-class athletes. Today in the House, I welcome champion marathoner Krista Duchesne and her family. Krista's esteemed athletic career started with high school track 
and later being named the MVP for Ontario University Athletics' top scorer for the University of Guelph hockey team. In 2005, Krista was the first Canadian woman to cross the finish line at the Boston Marathon. Krista has won the Mississauga Marathon on Mother's Day in 2009. In April 2015, Krista raced in Rotterdam, the Netherlands, to become the first Canadian in 20 years to qualify for the Olympics in the women's marathon. Her time of 2 hours, 29 minutes, 38 seconds was her second fastest marathon. Krista currently holds the record for the fastest 50-kilometer race in Canada for women with a time of 3 hours, 22 minutes, and 22 seconds. Krista ran all six marathon majors, London, Boston, Berlin, Chicago, New York, and Tokyo. Tokyo was the last on the list for Duchesne, and she finished a stellar 2 hours, 38 minutes, and 53 seconds, and the only Canadian to break a record in that race. Krista's favorite quote speaker is, I believe God made me for a purpose, but he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. Krista, you make Brantford Brant, Ontario and Canada proud. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Speaker. The greatest challenge we have in our hospitals right now, indeed in our health care system, is not having enough people to care for those people who need care. There is a health care human resource crisis in Ontario, and what it means is we're not fully using our operating room capacity. We still have emergency room closures, and the surgical backlog from the pandemic persists. Because our all because our hospitals are desperate for nurses, doctors, and other frontliners. Bill 60, as it stands, risks setting up a parallel for-profit system that is only going to make it harder for our hospitals to retain and recruit the people that they need to clear that surgical backlog. It will put patients' interest against the, patient, against the interest of shareholders. If we're going to effectively cure the backlog and reduce wait times, Bill 60 must be amended. It exists in crise de ressources humaines dans la secteur. We have a human resource crisis in Ontario. Wait times are still very high, and there is a backlog in surgeries due to the pandemic, because our hospitals need doctors, nurses, and other first-line workers. Bill 60, as it is, will probably put in place a parallel private system. This will only complicate the situation for our hospitals, who will have a hard time recruiting people they need in order to help the situation. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Perth Wellington. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I rise today to recognize a great man who passed away on March 12th in his 99th year. Arthur Boone was a skilled hockey and baseball player. He was invited to the Detroit Red Wings camp, and for many years he played senior A uh, hockey in New Hamburg. He continued to play hockey every Sunday night until the age of 84. He was also a member of the Stratford Nationals Inter-Country Baseball League until a broken ankle ended his career. However, that did not stop him from playing slow pitch until he was 71. He was also coached minor baseball and was there to watch his sons, our junior and Rick, play their games and eventually his grandchildren. Speaker, in addition to these sports accomplishments and being a loving husband and father, he was also a World War II veteran. At the age of 15, Art signed up and eventually joined the 19th Canadian Army Field Regiment. His first action in the war was the D-Day invasion of June 6, 1944. He would fight in many of the battles up the coast of France, through Belgium and Holland, and eventually Germany. After returning home, Art proudly served with the Perth Regiment, eventually retiring as Chief Warrant Officer. Art was given the Order of Military Merit, the Order of St. John, and the French Legion of Honour. For over 75 years, Speaker, Art organized and played a major role in the Remembrance Day service in Stratford. Speaker, we owe a great debt to Art, his family, and his fellow veterans. We will remember them.
Thank you. Member statements. Member for Thunder Bay Atacokan. Thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> Today, I'm going to shine a light on a tremendous citizen for Minister Rickford's riding in Kenora. This past weekend, Northwestern Ontario's very own Jeff Gustafson brought home an international fish fishing championship after competing in the Bass Master Classic in Knoxville, Tennessee. The first Canadian and second non-American to ever win the top prize. Jeff honed his craft on Lake of the Woods, winning tournament after tournament from the young age of 10. Gustafson was able to secure his win with 13 ounces over second place, catching two fish that weighed six pounds combined during Sunday's final round. He described the event as one of the hardest days of his life, but nevertheless, Jeff showed tremendous grit and determination in his triumphant victory down south. When he's not winning fishing championships, Jeff spends his days as a full-time outdoors guy, guide and has written for countless outdoor publications as is even the feature of his own television show. I'd like to congratulate Jeff Gustafson on behalf of myself and Minister Rickford. You are an inspiration to many and we, wish you, we all wish you luck in your next Elite Series event coming up this April. Thank you very much. That concludes our members' statements for this morning.